all my school stuff. Um, okay, now I think we're ready to go. <laughs> Hola, bienvenidos a mi canal. Yo soy Kaylee, and I have a huge disclaimer before you keep watching this video. I'm gonna teach you how to make these necklaces. But that does not mean that you should go and copy another artist. Don't go after this video on Pinterest and then screenshot, put the beads exactly the same way or, or make a necklace that looks almost identical. It's just not cool because that person, that's their art. Like it's a reflection of their personality. They spent time designing it, picking out beads, like, and you just, rip them off like not cool so please just be mindful and respect other people's work i think there's a lot of jewelry businesses out right now and i mean i make jewelry and i'm not trying to gatekeep whatsoever because the way i see it is that everybody has a very unique style somebody who likes my necklaces may not like your necklaces and somebody who likes your necklaces may not like mine Maybe we have different color palettes, the pendants are different, like so much varies from person to person, you know? I would try to make jewelry that's true to you and what you like and I'm sure there are people out there that will really like that. I think a good example of this is like my favorite artist currently who makes jewelry is Sleepy Bunny and she's probably annoyed. I'm always commenting and DMing her because I love her stuff and I just want to let her know that she's amazing. I don't know if she watches my videos, but uh, Avery, if you watch my videos, I love your work. You're amazing. Anyways, uh, she makes like really pretty white and pink necklaces. And every time I try to make a pink necklace, I just can't. Like I hate the way it comes out. There's something about, I don't know. I guess it's just not true to me, you know? Like I enjoy making a pink necklace every now and then, but my color palette is pretty much brown, white, cream, gray. So my most of my necklaces are brown, gray, or white, you know? And you can use the comment section to promote your business. Sure, go off. Comment your Etsy's and your Depop's and stuff so we can all check them out. And we can support each other. I know a lot of you guys have found my channel through my studio vlogs or uh, the how I make beaded. It, it's like a long studio vlog and it's like, everything like i was just making everything in that video and i think that video was like really good inspiration for people who want to start their own business but i didn't really go into making necklaces too much i kind of just like it was a general like oh i get some wire twist it that's about it some beads you know so i wanted to sit down and make a full like start to finish how to make beaded necklaces 2023 edition i guess because uh, like you can make beaded necklaces so many different ways the type we're making today is like very current i guess so i guess starting from the very beginning you need supplies uh right now i'm using this beadboard i got this one at hobby lobby i think i think i got this one at hobby lobby and it was like five six dollars which is kind of pricey but you don't need one this big to start they sell a smaller one at Dollar Tree. I don't know where mine's at right now, but I used that one for a really long time before I decided to upgrade, I guess. Of course, you need beads. I got so many questions on that one video asking where to get beads, what kind of wire I use, like pendants, everything. And so I wanted to make this video to kind of clarify a lot. Oh. What you're gonna need for sure. Oh, you know what? I don't even know if I have a wire. That would stink. That would actually stink. Most of these supplies you can either find at your local craft store, a beach store, um, so like Michael's Hobby Lobby or AliExpress. You could also find beads on Etsy, but I do find most of the time, not most, but like some of the time on Etsy, you're really just buying beads that people drop shipped from AliExpress. So they bought a whole bunch of charms for really cheap and then they just repackage them and sell them for like twice as much. Which I mean at that point it's kind of like you're paying more but you'll, you'll get your package sooner, you know? So it's like you want to pay AliExpress 
a couple dollars and wait a month or do you want to pay twice as much but get it in a week you know it's kind of you know pick your poison for the wire i use the artistic artistic wire brand they sell this at both hobby lobby and michael's i'm using 22 gauge i think i've also used either 24 or 20 i'm not sure like around that gauge size is best for these type of necklaces hobby lobby does have their own like in-store brand wire but i noticed that that wire is not as strong and it also tarnishes faster and when i say tarnish it's when your wire is exposed to water or like elements i guess it starts to turn like reddish as it oxidizes so kind of like rust it kind of looks rusty almost and uh, maybe it is rust i don't know i'm a bio major okay not a chem major okay <laughs> so i find that this wire is a little bit better i want to find something better than this but if it's not real silver it's gonna tarnish like that's just the truth of it so and it lasts you quite a while and then for beads and stuff, like I said, all the places I listed earlier, I store a lot of my chains and hardware in these little Ziploc baggies. I have some chain and some phone charms. I love these Sanrio baggies. I got these at Daiso. I want to get more, but I don't live anywhere near Daiso. And so I even have like these like teeny tiny Ziploc bags. These are crimp beads which we don't really need for these type of necklaces, but like chain. Just showing you kind of how I store things because I find that it's really hard, especially as your collection grows. I feel like this video is gonna be really long and it's not very organized, I'm sorry. And then I have like tons of these containers. There's probably better ways to store your beads. They have much bigger containers, but I really like the small squares because really when you buy beads you don't get that many it's just like a string of beads or a little ziploc baggie of charms so i think they fit pretty well in here and i have a lot of these hold on here i got all of these at walmart by the way these ones they're double sided so they have two sides they're like two dollars it's something really cheap like that And then I keep them all in this duffel bag that I got at Bass Pro Shop. It's pretty cool. I have like this is Texas patch from the Army Surplus Store, and, like keychains and stuff. I know some people have their beads in like a stationary organizer on their desk, which is cool, but I, I definitely enjoy bringing all my beads with me when I go travel to see family because I live a couple of hours away from all my family. so. I'm talking really fast and I just realized it's because of this. Normally I'm a really slow person. Okay, going on. Most of like the silver type things, like charms, silver spacer beads and all that, I recommend getting it from AliExpress. Unless you don't feel like waiting, then Etsy is probably your next best bet. Even eBay sometimes has really good um, deals. Bead stores are crazy. Like they're a little bit more pricey, but the beads, like the selection is usually really nice. Usually, I, it, it, it's a hit or miss. And save your receipts. Save your receipts if you have a business. Nobody ever says that, and I'm, I'm gonna say it again. Save your receipts. Yeah, beads, wire, oh, clasps, clasps, clasps. As far as clasps, clasps, I don't like that word. <laughs> clasps go. There's a couple different routes you can go and a couple different ways. You could just do the little, the little lobster clasp with a jump ring and close it like that or you can make it adjustable with a chain uh for chains i recommend michael's i feel like they have the the prettiest chain selection and uh i would go when you have a coupon or when things are on sale same for hobby lobby i go when the jump rings are uh 50 off i think or 60 something like that and i like to buy several sizes of jump rings like really small ones and really big ones my thing with if you're making the jewelry yourself think about it from like a a user standpoint those little tiny lobster clasps excuse me little tiny lobster clasps are terrible like i hate the way they feel and they're so hard to open so i like to get the ones that are a little bit bigger i don't have a small one to show you but just like for size comparison 
these are different size jump rings and then here's like a kind of bigger one they sell this one at hobby lobby they don't have these exact ones but they have similar at hobby lobby these ones you can find online on like like i said etsy aliexpress ebay john mungus ones and these are so nice on necklaces if you've ever owned a necklace with one of these on there it's no problem taking it on and off it's just a great user experience and i use these a lot when i first started making necklaces but now i find that as i'm going for more of a dainty look these don't suit the look but they're way more practical if that makes sense you know but when you're making chunky with like a lot of chunky beads go for this like there's no reason not to should i write this down i'll write this down and take a picture mm, materials clasp wire uh, jump rings i think that's it i think that's the materials list i'll insert a picture or something in case you want a screenshot and like take the screenshot with you to the craft store so you know what to get i also recommend if you're going to the craft store to just like write down oh i want pink beads i want pearls i want you know it's specific so when you get there you don't feel overwhelmed and you're like i don't even know and then you get home and you didn't even get what you were supposed to get because uh, if you're anything like me at the craft store, I never come home with what I was supposed to get, never. So I try to go with a list. Forgot about the tools you'll need. <gasps> Wait a minute. Yes, I have wire. Oh my gosh. I knew I wasn't dumb. Okay. I have a Hobby Lobby bag. And inside the Hobby Lobby bag, I have um, phone charms and wire. See, this is like the bigger one I was telling you. So I keep my tools in this crown vanilla bag. It comes with the... <laughs> this is why it's not mine, but it's pretty funny. I, I was like, can I keep the bag? Cause it like fits the aesthetic. It matches my double. I have four flyers. I think really this is all you need. I haven't really needed to get anything else after this. For manipulating the wire, you'll want two of these round nose pliers. I originally just bought one and I thought this would be fine because there's a cutter in the middle and then there's the flat part here and then here's the round part. So I was like, it has three in one, like that's all I need. But there are times where you want to open jump rings or close them and so it's much easier to do it when you have two of these. I would not recommend getting the small one. I got suckered in. I was like, that is so cute. So that's why I bought it because it was cute. But uh, in reality, I should have bought a full size one. Maybe uh, I'll get one eventually. <laughs> and then i realized very quickly that i cannot cut close enough to things with the cutters in here you're gonna need some of these these are precise wire cutters and the flat end allows you to get really up close to cut wire so i like these a lot i wish they were in cuter colors but that's just me being picky and then the newest addition I did not have this in my last video um is the one step looper this is like very viral among the jewelry making community it's, i will be showing you how to use this everybody has mixed reviews on this but this is great okay all the mixed reviews i think they're just being really picky and i'll show you why when we get here this one's the most expensive of the tools i think these are like five six seven around there and this one's around, it's like 11 to $20, somewhere in there. Um, so I'm gonna add these to the list so I can have a defined list. Two round nose pliers. That's all the base materials that I use, but I do want to encourage you, totally go ham, go crazy. Anything you can make into a necklace, go for it because I feel like something really unique that you use as a pendant will set your shop, it will set it apart from other people who make similar necklaces. And a good um, example of this is Chiz Does Things here on YouTube. They make really cool necklaces, like really, really creative. They even have a tutorial, they have a tutorial. I'm definitely gonna be showing you a little bit different just because I, like I said, every artist does things differently. So I'm showing you my way. So now we're gonna start with the process. Uh, also, I've seen on like 
like reels and shorts it's so interesting to see how everybody builds their necklaces so different that is so cool to me i always start in the middle but i've seen some people they start from one end and they go around i think that is so cool so i first start with a pendant i haven't made ne a necklace in a while school has been killing me drowning in homework you know that song Drowning by a Boogie Boogie with a Hoodie? He's like, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I have these three pendants. I have like a teddy bear and a heart, which I love. I love these so much. And then I have a normal teddy bear. I can't. A normal teddy bear. And then I have this little bunny that I like doing for more cyber gray themed necklaces. And then this one would be more for white or brown. And this is like up to interpretation <laughs> and then i kind of just start loading up this area here with different beads maybe i'm considering i'll zoom in so you can kind of see what we're looking at here okay so i'll load them up i have like some swirls i think these are kind of cool like some of these pearls I like to I don't know what I want to make <laughs> see something like this like this takes so much time to like really think thinking and thinking I like this whole bead dumping step because it, it's a really fun brainstorm for me I have a phone charm using very similar beads so obviously I guess I like them together with the bunny but um yeah I just enjoy it's kind of therapeutic I already have some jump rings laid out, but I, I do tend to use a lot of jump rings, so I'll put some extra ones here. Also, like mixing in some big ones just for interest. Sorry, this is taking so long. <laughs> I mean, the process does take a while. Like even now, I kind of feel like I'm being a little rushed. But good art takes time. I think I'm ready to start building. Let's zoom out. I really like this. I haven't done this either. I think that's cool. We might go with that. And then let's do I try to do contrasting beads next to each other just because I feel like that looks the best. So I don't want to do like white with white, you know? I'm just playing around. Let me add back the gray. This is supposed to be a gray necklace and nothing's gray. Ha ha ha. I love adding jump ring stacks. So fun. I said start to finish. I was gonna show you from start to finish. That's what I said. But I might not really have time because I do take forever. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and show you with what I have now. Don't hate me. <gasps> Another tip I have is to stack beads. I don't know if you can see, but I have like two beads together here, two beads together here. You can stack as many beads as you want on like a single piece of wire. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit, sorry. Ooh, another idea too I have for, for uh, necklaces is to add ribbons. I've been super into bows, as everybody else has on the internet, honestly. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a good idea too, to add bows. I've put bows in a couple of necklaces. Let's start the wire process. So we're here, and every time I'm done with the wire, like I'm going to cut a piece off, you kind of want to hold it taut, but I just bent it back into this little notch kind of kind of like that i just bend it back in and then i'll cut the piece off i don't like to work with big pieces of wire that's just a personal preference though you could work with it while it's still on here and then cut it off so you don't waste as much you see all this is like extra wire um i've seen other people they cut like a couple inches and they'll make a whole bunch of little Kind of like this but these are just like waste pieces for me um that are still usable but they'll just have 
and I can't show you. <laughs> so I just have a whole bunch of these and I feel like this is a little bit more wasteful to me. So I like about this size and then totally optional, but it does make it a lot easier if you straighten out the pieces of wire using the flat part of these right here. It's not gonna be perfectly straight, but I think that's good enough. It's like all crooked, okay. <laughs> so there are two ways I do this, depending on the look I'm going for or the, so for this first one, you wanna get the wire. This is the twisty method. I'll try to put a picture or something. <laughs> and I will leave a little gap here like about that much. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I'll just bend it so that the wire makes an L shape. See the L shape like that. And then I'll put the pliers right at the corner of the wire, so the corner. And I'll try to put it like closer to the end so that you get a small loop. You want to hold it tight and wrap the wire around. And then I kind of readjust the pliers to where they're on the inside of that loop. Oh my gosh, you see that? I want them in the inside of the loop here. And you're gonna finish that loop. So now that it looks like this, and I hold like this now, and I wrap the wire right under I do it a couple times. So now it's going to look like where's, okay. I think that's as good as I'm gonna show you. So it kinda looks like that. And now you're gonna wanna get the wire cutters and you're gonna wanna get as close as you can and cut that wire off like that. Oh, okay. So that's the twisty method. And then you can put your bead on there and do the same thing. So you're gonna make the L shape, put it in that corner, wrap it around. Sorry, I'm not showing this at the best angle. Wrap it around, hold it, the loop. I will link a tutorial down below. If I'm not explaining it well, which I'm probably not, I would totally recommend watching her tutorial because she filmed it way better. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So that's like your first little link. And you're gonna wanna repeat the same thing over and over, except to add onto the link, once you get, once you get here and you made the little loop, don't twist it yet. You're gonna wanna fit this one on here you have to push it on, it'll link like that, and then you'll hold it in the circle, and then you twist. You just keep on doing the same thing, add a, add a bead, do a little twisty thing, and this, this is a lot more durable than the next method I'm going to show you, because this one, you have to cut the wire in order for it to break, or you know, bend it enough to where it'll break in half. It does take up a lot more room because the twisties take up room on each link and it's a totally different look but I kind of enjoy this I don't know it reminds me of something a grandma would make <laughs> in like a good way though so yeah that's um, the twisty method next I'm going to show you the one step looper method we're going to talk about the pros and cons of this guy see that you did not see that I just knocked everything everywhere <laughs> I'm so embarrassing the one-step looper I feel like wastes a lot less wire because you're not twisting and you can get more precise I don't know I just feel like it wastes a lot less wire than the other method does 
but it's a different look and like I said it can just be easily be bent out of place if somebody tugs hard enough so the way you're gonna want to use this one is you have your piece of wire here and you're going to stick it in and it doesn't need to go all the way through to that hole you just want to make sure it's like that and then you crimp it around and it cuts it off for you automatically so i have like little pieces here and when i do this first loop i like to i like to bend the wire that way it's a straight line down do you see that so it was like this and i just bent it down that way when i take it out the loop is more centered if that makes sense i don't really like the way it looks if i don't bend it so i, I always make sure to and if you forget to bend it you can always put it back inside the looper and then bend it that way the loop is more centered hopefully you can get what i mean but sometimes i'll see people they don't do that step and i'm just not a fan of how it looks when you don't do that step so yeah now the reason that this gets complaints is because people say that this loop is not completed and that there's too much of a gap between the end of the loop and this little stem part but i don't think that's a very valid criticism because you kind of need for this to have space because you're going to open it anyways i mean you don't need it but you know what i mean you're, you're not really so i grab the side oh. i'll grab the side here and i will just move it in I will do it like this, this motion. So then you're gonna add the bead on, pretty self-explanatory, you stick it through the hole. Now to finish it off, you're gonna stick the wire through the one step looper and this time you are gonna stick it all the way through. And I try to get as close to the bead as I can. I kind of even overlap the bead. If you can kind of see, where's the, here. It's like already touching the bead, it's already on top of the bead. And I will make sure that this is flat and that it will be in line with this next loop. And then I go for it and it cuts it for you. So you already have your little piece. And then I will go ahead and since this is the first link, I'm going to close it up that same way that I told you. You just kind of use your wrist and push it in and to add another one you're going to do that same process a little bit on there go make sure you bend the wire back so that the loop is centered see since this one is a link second link you can open it up instead of closing it off you can open it up fit that next one in there and then close it up you see how this takes up a lot less room than the twisties you can use these as well if you don't want to make a full link and you're just going to have it hanging off the necklace. So it's kind of the same process. You're just going to put your bead on it and the little ball will stop it from falling off. And then I like to use either my one step looper or the twist method and it's like a little charm. And they have ones that are flat if you don't like the look of the little ball at the end. But I think that's really cute to add to a necklace, little danglies. To open and close a jump ring, it's pretty simple. I don't really, I grab the jump ring with the plier and I use this part flat. This is how I grab the jump ring. And then I pull it towards me and now my jump ring is open. Oh, now it's gone. Jump rings will go flying. I lose so many jump rings. But yeah. This one's for stability and then this one's to move it. And then to close it, I will just do the reverse of that and I will hold for stability and push the other side away from me. So I'm just gonna start with this star part. A little tip 
for if you're doing a link with a star is to do the bottom first because it's a lot harder to make the loop in this area now i'm gonna take a jump ring open that up using the technique that i taught you <laughs> attach the charm i also feel like the one step looper is a lot more neat in my opinion it because the loop sizes are more precise also something to keep in mind if you are gonna start making necklaces i know you're gonna get really excited at first and you're gonna want to make a whole bunch of necklaces but just try to remind yourself to take breaks keep a good posture stuff like that because as easy as it is to get lost in doing this i think it's important to take breaks it's for your body for your hands because i know my hands will hurt from from using so much pressure with the pliers and stuff like that idea for mixing things up is you could just attach these to the way i showed you but you could also attach them with a jump ring and it'll give a different look i really enjoy how let me see if i can show you a thicker jump ring looks with the wire just because it adds some contrast i really enjoy the contrast within the necklace because it makes for more interest visually so yeah i enjoy that sometimes I'll, I'll do the jump rings all throughout in between the links and other times i won't it just depends what i'm feeling it also kind of gives more of like an industrial look if that makes sense i totally think i want to go for jump ring right here now that i'm showing you <laughs> this looks cool looks cool here I'm doing a jump ring stack, which I love. I, these make me so happy for no reason. I think I just really like chains, chain looking things. I like interesting chains. You could just go with a stack like this to add even more visual interest. This is where it gets spicy. You can add another jump ring in the middle. I'll show you right now. Do you see right here? There's two in the middle. You can even add a third one and go really wild. Or you can add one this way and make a chain around. That would be cool. That's another uh, idea I guess you, you could do is you can add chain, like something like maybe this. Maybe not this then, but as an example, you can add chain like hanging off the side of your necklace and then maybe have like this little charm hanging off that chain. So I think you kind of get the gist of of what's going on here. I think I have maybe like 40 minutes of sunlight left max. I would do the same thing all the way up till I get to the end of the beadboard. And then I'm going to show you how to end a necklace. Let's say these are your last links. Um, you need the clasp, right? And then over here, I like to make my thingies adjustable so i will use some chain so i have some chain here and i just kind of eyeball it i cut some off you can either cut it here like a monster <laughs> or you could use the uh, pliers to open up the last jump ring i don't feel like doing that so i'm gonna cut it like a maniac if it's a simple chain, you can just use one of the jump rings here and open it up and then attach it to the necklace. But in this case, I'm going to use the jump ring here. And then I need a jump ring to attach these two. And then I'm going to use a jump ring to attach the little chain to the end of this. The little charm. All my words are running together. LOL. And now you can clasp it up. And I also like with the little charm you put on the end, it kind of hangs off the back. So if the person has their hair up, it kind of looks pretty if you have a little bead or something there. You can even go crazy with this back part. Sometimes I'll add a little star charm. I think that's everything start to finish on how you would do it. I did not finish mine, but don't, don't be like me. Finish your necklace. And if you follow this 
and you've used all this you should totally tag me on instagram or dm me i would love to see what you make like that would make me so happy because i know i'm a terrible teacher but if this helped at least one person that would that would make my day totally make my day so yeah i'm gonna start cleaning up now because Wyatt's about to get home from work so i want to spend time with him and do all my homework i have so much studying to do noodles going off i will see you guys next week